What's going on guys? I hope you're all having an awesome week so far and smashing all your goals, smashing all your workouts and getting shit done. Um, just wanted to jump on a quick video and basically give a few key tips which I use in every single one of my workouts and just basically my approach to my whole fitness plan and the way that I go about things. Um, basically to maximise the returns on all the effort you're putting in the gym because if you're having shitty workouts and you've got a shitty approach you're going to get shitty results so use some of these things make a note of them screenshot it at the end because i'll write it down for you so it's really simple um you're going to tell me ed these are really simple things but simplicity is our friend okay complexity and making complexity a lot of things kills action completely if it's simple and you understand it and you know how to implement it and action it into your own fitness journey, then you're going to see really good results from it. So stick me, stick with, for the, can't get my words out today. Stick with me on it, and um, you'll learn something from it. So the first one, we'll jump straight into it. Is planning your workouts. Okay. So first of all, do you plan? your workouts, yes or no? Do you have a structured approach? Do you know what you're doing, when, on what days? If the answer is no, seriously start doing it because you're gonna see your commitment and dedication to the gym go up massively. You won't miss workouts, or you miss very few at least, and, um, and you'll start to move in the direction you wanna to get to. So what I mean by planning is either use a board like this, use Excel, use Word, create a table with all the days of the week and write on it what on what days, what body part you're training, at what time. That way, you're not gonna be able to deviate from the plan. You've got it all set out and leveled out for you. You can go even further into it and you can start planning what exercise you can do, set structures, rep structures, that sort of thing. If you really wanna go into it, you can also write down what weights you've been doing um, and how you can progress with them, which we'll cover in a little bit anyway. Um, but you'll probably see guys who, who take notepads and they're writing little notes on how many reps and sets and what weight they did. And you probably laugh at it. I used to as well, but you can only progress if you know where you've been and you know where you're going, if you have a goal in, at the end of it. So planning is absolutely key with your workouts. You don't have to be that person who sits in the gym and writes stuff down, but at least have it planned out so you know what you're doing when, because it's really gonna help you. Second one is Intensity, okay? Intensity. So you've probably been in the gym and you can tell who's having a really, really awesome workout and who's not. There'll be guys on the phone just sat there, not really sweating, just doing a lightweight. Just really, they don't want to be there. They're just going because they think if they go to the gym and they're sat in there, their body's going to change and they're going to get fitter, they're going to get stronger, they're going to look better. At the end of the day, that's not going to happen at all and you're going to basically stay stagnant and plateau if you're not having intense workouts and, and really pushing yourself to your limit. So it's a bit of a mindset game, this one, but it transfers into how you approach your actual workouts as well. So intensity has, is absolutely key. There's a few ways to do that. Obviously, have your mindset tuned in to what you want to do. And if you've got a, a vision and a goal of how you want to change your body and uh, it, it might not be obviously resistance training and adding muscle. It could be getting fitter. It could be, you can transfer it to uh, whatever goal you have in terms of fitness, but make sure you're pushing yourself to your absolute limits. Obviously don't burn out and kill yourself, but push yourself that extra bit and you'll, you'll see that you're actually capable of a lot more than you think you are. Uh, don't be afraid to, to push those limits. Okay. Cause a lot of people think I can't do heavier. I'm not going to try it. If you don't, push yourself and, and try and lift heavier weights and <clears throat> and um, really go for those last few reps because you're worried about dropping the weights. Obviously, do it in a safe way, but if you and if you have a spotter, even better. But really push yourself, see how far you can take yourself, and you'll see a lot more results from that because those that change in your body, let's say, especially in weight training, that change in your muscles and that muscle growth is really going to occur in those last few reps when you're going to failure and you can't go anymore. 
So usually on my training, if let's say I'm doing chest press, for example, I will go until I literally can't get it up anymore. And usually you can learn to put that within your rep and set structures combined with the weight. And you can find that sweet spot where you say, right, I'm going to do four sets of 12 reps and I'm going to do it at, at, at this weight, right? So you, over time, you'll learn what your body can take and how much weight you can take within that rep and set structure to push you to your limit each time. And you'll, you'll get to know your body a little bit better. So push yourself to really intensely in your workouts and you'll see a lot more returns on the time you're spending in the gym. That can apply to your HIIT workouts as well. Really push yourself, get your heart rate up and you're going to burn a lot more calories in that process. So the third one, this I'll go into a little bit of detail with this one. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so you've probably heard me or seen me speak about this before in my previous posts, but it's a really important one. I don't know if you can see it there. It's progressive overload, okay? So this can go hand in hand with your intensity and keep and obviously pushing yourself to the next level each time. But progressive overload is basically over time, you're adding more strain and stress from the stimuli that you're giving your body, whether that's obviously cardio, HIIT workout, resistance training, you're increasing the load on your body and strain on your body over time so it doesn't plateau and basically go stagnant, okay? Because a lot of people do this, they'll, they'll do the same set, rep and weight structure for two years and they'll wonder why they're staying the same and they say, the gym's not working for me, it's not me, it's, it's not for me. So progressive overload is the key for this. So what you wanna do and a way to approach this is let's say you've started going to the gym and I'm gonna take bench press for an example, okay? Sorry. Um, been a long day um it's not coming out need a yawn um progressive overload so you want to when you get into the gym oh my god sorry guys i don't know if you've ever had this where like a yawn just stays there and it's not coming out but it wants to and it's like teasing you a little bit got that right now <clears throat> okay so progressive overload let's say you get into the gym and you're starting a new program you're on bench press you've worked out so you're going to do three sets of 10 reps okay so let's say you've figured out what weight works best for you and you're going to do you're going to work with 50 kg to start with so for the first week that first session doing chest you do 50 kg for three sets of 10 reps the next week you can either do the same weight and increase it to um, 12 reps instead of 10 or you can increase it by 2.5 kg so you're either increasing the weight or you're increasing the reps and then over time when you you can take more volume of that weight you can then up it to four sets of 10 or four sets of 12 so you can play around with different things same with hit workouts as well let's see you're on the treadmill Let's come out, nice one. Um, let's say you're on the treadmill and you are doing hill sprints or whatever. So to progressive overload with that, you can either run for longer and sprint for longer. So instead of 30 seconds per set, you do 35 or 40 seconds, whatever it is you want, or you can decrease the rest periods, um, or you can increase the incline of the treadmill. There's different ways to make it harder for you. So you continually push yourself further and, and basically grow in that exercise that you're doing, which is then going to put more strain on your body and your body's good. The only way that your body can respond to that extra stimuli that you're giving it is to adapt and grow. So again, whether that's growing muscle, burning fat, increasing your fitness, gaining strength, all of those areas will progressive overload if you're adding to it over the time basically if that makes sense hopefully it does um so that is a big one which i really really focus on and i tell my clients too and the fourth one again really 
really simple, but I see so many people, especially when I go to the gym, it's ridiculous who don't do this. Fourth one is focus. Okay, so focus, get in the gym, know what you're doing, you've planned it already, you know you're gonna have an intense workout, you, you know that you're progressing, overloading, tie all that in with focus, okay? Get in there with the mindset of what, what you wanna do, what you wanna get out of the, the session, and how hard you're gonna push yourself. Plug into your headphones, have an awesome playlist that you've set up that really gets you pumped up and gets you through those last reps could be heavy metal music, could be, I don't know, what you listen to. I, I love heavy stuff, which is like really pushing me through those last sets or that last set on the, on the treadmill sprints and whatnot. So get them in, it helps you focus. Stop paying attention to what other people are doing in the gym. If you just sit there looking at everyone, you're not gonna be in the mindset. So in between, in between the sets when you're resting, just close your eyes, really tune into your music, tune into your thoughts that you want to push forward with your workout and that's really going to make a difference to how much you, well first of all how long you spend in the gym so you're not wasting time and not tracking your um, rest periods and stuff, it's another one key point as well, track your uh, rest periods because you want to know how long in between you should you should be resting in order to then move on to the next set or exercise or whatever and that will save you 10-15 minutes of, off your, ex off your uh, workouts 100%. So that's another one anyway. But yeah, just be really focused and dialed in and tuned into what you're doing. Um, that can, again, coming from that focus could be my muscle connection. So when you're working a muscle group, really feel the squeeze in that muscle and focus on it. Um, what I like to do is sometimes if I'm just doing something with one arm, I like to put my f hand or, or fingers on the muscle that I'm working to really push against it and you'll, you'll soon find out how to maneuver and work with your own body if you know how it's working and that's sort of the, the structure of it and mobility of it basically. So you'll, you'll basically get to learn how your own body works and adapts to different exercises. So it's a really good way of being intuitive with it all. So give that a go, it could work for you. So going over these again, Planning your workouts, intensity of your workouts, progressive overload, and focus, okay? So screenshot that if you want. Three, two, one. See you later. Um, get that done. Message me if you have any questions or wanna discuss anything like that. I know it's really simple, but action every single one of these and you'll see such a big difference in what you're doing and how you're going about things. So I hope you got something from that and um, yeah, I'll speak to you guys soon.